Hi everyone, it's Quickie Baby, and welcome back to World of Tanks. And today I'm going to be playing the worst tier 8 premium tanks that are available inside the game. You might not even know that some of these exist with how sporadically they are actually used on the battlefield. So how have I decided what are the worst premium tanks? Well, I think it has to be their ability to be able to win the battle. So without further ado, according to uh, Tanks GG, these are the vehicles that have won the least battles on the European server in the last 60 days. And wow, what a surprise. The Kanonen Jagdpanzer with a 46.02 average win ratio. It's only been played 6,700 times. And this tank is an absolute joke in so many ways. How about firstly that this vehicle was so bad that Wargaming decided to try and fix it by basically just giving it a bigger gun, but they didn't actually remove the Kanonen Jagdpanzer or just change its gun. They decided to make the Kanonen Jagdpanzer with the 105mm. Now, when Wargaming released the Kanonen Jagdpanzer with the 105mm, they gave everyone who owned the Kanonen Jagdpanzer, the opportunity to trade it in and get the Kanonen Jagdpanzer with the 105mm instead. Of course, some people just decided to keep this now very quite rare tank on the battlefield and just get a 105mm instead. And this is one of the cases where a bigger gun actually makes the tank just outrightly better. Now the Kanonen Jagdpanzer with the 90mm it, it's actually laughable when you compare this tank to, for example, the latest and greatest TVP-100. Just look at the differences here. The firepower, the pen, the alpha damage, the gun handling. Sure, I guess the Kanonen Jagdpanzer has a little bit of mobility. The armor, just everything about this vehicle is truly tragic. And if this isn't a good example of the difference of, shall we say, 2013 World of Tanks and kind of your 2022 World of Tanks, I don't really know what is. Anyway, that's what these playing videos are all about. Quite often, uh, not being able to cherry pick the games and truly suffer. And seeing how today I'm playing the worst premium tanks in the game, yeah, I expect I'm going to be suffering quite a lot. Well, at least when I sign up, I'm going to be feeding some of those new TVP 100s on the enemy team some big games, right? So, the Kanonen Jagdpanzer with the 90mm. This is actually one of those tanks which I, I couldn't blame you if you decided to use a camouflage net on. That's because the low caliber guns in the game actually lose less camo rating after firing. So I can imagine with a full field mod setup and a camo net, you could probably still maintain about 15% camo when you're firing which might actually allow you to fire the gun more than once. And when you've only got a 90mm gun on a tier 8 tank destroyer that deals 240 damage, yeah, you, you want to actually try and fire multiple times. So I'm trying to consider about where to take this vehicle. There are two positions which I think I would like to use. One of them would be up here, and one of them would be maybe down towards the south. I think I'm just going to have to try and start up here and see if I can manage to get some shots. But in fact, I feel like that's too slow. And I feel like it's too passive. You know, with the Kanon and Yagpans, I feel like you have to use some of the speed of the tank to be able to get around. Maybe be a little bit more cheeky. I think this game, where it's pretty much all medium tanks and tank destroyers, is going to be one where the one team is able to push through. And oh my lord, that CS-63 doesn't want to be playing in this game for very long. And that's great for us because that tier 10 medium tank, if we can get rid of that, it's going to be a great advantage for us on the battlefield. So I'm currently using vents with coated optics and a gun rammer on this vehicle. It's kind of an annoying tank as well because if you've got your Gorilla crew and you put your Gorilla crew in this, uh, the commander actually is the not the radio operator on the Gorilla, but when you play the Kanonen Jagdpans with the with the 90 millimeter, the the commander is the radio operator as well. So you actually kind of want to take your crew from the Borsig if you've kept that tank and you've got a great crew on the Borsig to be able to put in this vehicle so you can have both recon and situational awareness on the vehicle. And then when you do that, the vehicle is actually playable. This gun handling is truly laughable. After playing a lot of TVP 100 with a fully traversable turret, oh my lord, how did you get so close to me? Oh my god. Goodness gracious, am I about to get Omega farmed? Well, at least I managed, my team managed to get a little bit of damage into them. Um, 
This is where, you know, when you're a TD, you don't really have the alpha damage to be able to go after the uh, Char Fugia 4, but I've decided that I have to try and actually still spot this player. So I'm going to go up and try and be like a scout. Maybe maybe I'll spot him and he won't see me. No, okay, he did see me. Maybe I can use my gun depression to shoot him in the side of the turret. Is he just going to rush me now? Or am I actually going to be able to make this work? This is outrageous. Okay, they've got two artillery, and remember, I'm a glass cannon tank destroyer, so I'm not really sure about that. I'm hoping this TVP maybe will go across, but he probably won't. I'm just going to keep this Char Future 4 uh, a little bit honest. Oh, and there's the RT. Yes, of course the RT's going to get me from pretty much in the corner. And here comes the Char. And the other RT hits me and stuns me. But oh dear, maybe I can block him or get out of the way. I mean... What is there to say, boys and girls? Great. I ended up with... A gun that just doesn't intimidate a tank in a position where I can't manage to out-trade an autoloader. And then I get dumped on by two artillery in my glass cannon tank. Well, I guess I should have probably just gone up on the ridgeline and tried to out-trade him with my non-existent alpha damage. Oh my lord, this is a painful tank in this current meta where there are TVPs. And this is about as bad as it can be. I genuinely thought that this tank had preferential matchmaking until I saw tier 10 tanks on the enemy team. I cannot honestly believe that this vehicle can meet tier 10 tanks. Is there a surprise why this thing has the worst win ratio of any tier 8 premium? I don't think so. Okay, so now we've suffered in the Kanon and Jagdpanzer, maybe we can play a more flexible class that is actually going to be able to do okay. What is the worst medium tank with regards to win ratio on the European server? Well, it's actually the Primo Victoria. So this is actually, I, I'm not sure this is a fair result. And do you know why? The Primo Victoria is identical to the Sturzwang 81, but for some reason it has a 1.25% win ratio average below the Sturzwang 81. And I think what we found here is that the people who buy the Primo Victoria uh, are probably more interested in kind of like the style and the music, and maybe even just getting one of the uh, the Sabaton crews that they can put in another tank, rather than actually maybe interested in purchasing the vehicle. Maybe they're they're casual players who are who are just really interested in in power metal and and Sabaton, which are actually a pretty pretty cool band, right? Got to see them play uh, live at Gamescom, which was a lot of fun. Many of you were watching my stream at Gamescom. We got to uh, have the band play behind. I mean, I, I mean, they were just my like backing band, right? Yeah, I, yeah, maybe that one might be a little bit too much to try and push over. <laughs> anyway, so with the Prima Victoria, what am I gonna do? I've got myself a gun rammer, I've got myself vents, and I've got myself vertical stabilizers. On a map like this, I can think nothing better than trying to get forwards and trying to spot out. And as you can see. I've got really good preferential matchmaking today, haven't I? Having to play against tier 10 tanks on the enemy team in both of these games. So the Primo Victoria is basically now a bad Centurion 5-1 that has APCR rounds as standard, which do have very good shell velocity. So if you don't have good aim and you can't lead your targets very well, then maybe the Primo Victoria is still going to be a decent kind of a little bit of an advantage with that APCR. But realistically, this tank just has horrendous hull armor. It doesn't have a turret that really works out. And more importantly, it has god-awful uh, camera rating, as we can see, because it is clearly a Centurion. So I'm going to try and push forwards. I'm going to try and get to a ridge line. I'm going to try and actually be useful in this game, in this matchup. And what I'm quickly finding is that this vehicle is actually incredibly slow. And for some reason, I am got red ping and this is an absolute disaster am i disconnecting from world of tanks what is going on with my connection here i am still recording and i am dead because that was one of the biggest lag spikes i think i have ever seen in world of tanks all right you know what I, I just think I'm gonna have to restart the video today, okay? So hi everyone, it's Quickie Baby and welcome back to World of Tanks. Today I'm gonna be playing the worst premium tanks you've ever seen in your life. Yeah, I'm gonna be picking the based on the win ratios of the last 60 days of the European server and let's just jump straight into the game and we're playing in the Kanona Niag Panzer. Yeah, maybe I should do all of my intros uh, that quickly. Luckily, unlike the first game, 
that we have played today. Uh, I've actually managed to get myself into a really nice map and matchup this time. So maybe this time in the Kanon and Yagpans it's going to go well. And let's just cross our fingers that for some reason my connection with World of Tanks is not going to randomly just decide to give me about 10 seconds of lag at the worst possible time. And I drive out in front of multiple tier 10 tanks. So this T3485M says fourth time in a row plus two matchmaking. Nice. Yeah, first time, buddy. Alrighty then, so I'm playing in a very fast German tank destroyer. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and get forwards. I'm going to try and get my ridgeline work going. I can play like a proficient scout, and I might even be able to bully people on a ridgeline. This tank actually has a fairly okay amount of hit points. 1,200 is not the worst thing you'll ever play around with a tier 8. A lot of tier 8 tank destroyers back in the day had more like a 1,000 kind of hit points. So I'm going to get forwards and I'm going to try and harass and hope that my team will help me out a little bit. Now this isn't your kind of regular tank destroyer gameplay, but I don't really feel like this is your regular kind of tank destroyer. Got to watch out obviously for artillery hitting me here. But um, I'll tell you what, this AMD also has to worry about me spotting him here and also the Borask managing to put some pressure on him. I feel like the team that wins the middle of the map on this Muravanka matchup usually is the one that wins the game afterwards. So I've decided to get forwards here, and I'm hoping that maybe I can go up into this bush, use my camera rating, which is actually very good on this vehicle. And remember, I don't even have to set up my binoculars because I'm using coated optics. The only thing I've really got to watch out for is if there's kind of a Borask or a TVP-100 in this, these kind of bushy areas. And if there is, I'm not going to feel very well. Intuition on this tank is mandatory because its um, penetration is just so awful. So I actually end up getting spotted there. I guess maybe it was the T-34-100 who spotted me there while I was trying to go for the 88. And, man, it's just no surprise why this tank is so awful. The fact that you... The fact that you can kind of like get a shot in and it does 240. And then you've got a, a five second reload, which is significantly longer than a turreted tank has now. Luckily, the camo rating on this vehicle is very nice, so we've got that going for us, but we're a big old easy artillery shot to be able to hit as well. If I'd been using the 105mm gun on this vehicle, I would have just done 780 damage on average rather than the, uh, the abysmal 480 that we should have done, but we've actually been rolling pretty well with our damage, so I guess I got that going for me. So it looks like the 88 is chilling in those bushes there. I kind of want to see if I can get some shots across on the T-3485. Looks like I've got this T-34-1 down in the woods. Won't be able to get him. Because I don't have a commander's vision system, we're not able to uh, get some extra vision through here. Maybe I can get this T-43. Oh, he's come across. Is he going to spot me? Luckily, this tank's gun depression is pretty nice. But gosh, I really don't like that gun handling. Okay, there's the 88. Luckily, these new outlines will show me exactly where his track is. And there we go. We pick up a shot on the tracks. We repeat another shot on the tracks. Now we can aim for the center of the vehicle. So we've got a higher chance of getting him. And we'll finish him off. All right. Well, I'm glad I lagged and restarted the video today. Thank you, Wargaming, for uh, giving me that, that lag spike. Actually, seems to have worked out pretty well for me. And now, looks like the shoe is on the other foot as the Panther manages to shut that tank down. So yeah, the Kanon and Jagdpanzer with the 90mm and coated optics. Against these kind of tanks, I'm pretty sure most most TDs are going to work out well for you. Oh, shall I go for the HE shell on this guy? I think I'll fire one AP first so I don't waste the intuition. And I'm going to try and hit HE shells on his mantlet. Maybe they'll pen, maybe they won't. I should probably go back for AP now. Um, Alright, so we've got a Borask over in the corner. Won't be able to find him. I guess I should probably be a bit of a scout in this situation now. I mean, my hit points aren't really going to last if I if I play too recklessly. But, whoa, look at that. I'm actually out scouting the TVP-100. See if I can hit him. I probably should have pulled back behind the bushes there. Luckily, I didn't actually get spotted. Oh, my word. A beautiful irony of a TVP-100 being shut down by a Kanonin Jagdpanzer with a 90mm gun. Woo! That, it, that just shouldn't be happening. That's the equivalent of a gazelle, like, kicking a lion when it's being chased. Resulting in the lion's immediate demise. But even though this game has gone about as well as I think a game could ever go for the Kanonin Jagdpanzer with the 90mm... Oh, hello. You're a little... 
a little TD, aren't you? <laughs> okay, we got him as well. Well, I don't think I would usually recommend ramming things. In fact, I actually did more damage to myself with that ram than I did to the E25. But wow, 2,700 damage and a possibility of maybe finding the artillery in this dip and maybe even penetrating an HE shell on him. Look at that. Ladies and gents, boys and girls, 4,000 combined for the Kunon and Yank Panzer. Well, maybe I should just cut all of the first part of the video and pretend like this was my first game. Uh, yeah, I don't think I can do that. I think that would defeat the whole point. So, first game, disaster for the Kunon and Yank Panzer, but we actually ended up winning. Second game, Great for the Kanon and Yak Panzer and 4,000 combined. I'd be surprised if this isn't an ace tanker considering how badly this tank is usually played. There we go, an ace tanker. Although, realistically, you could you could probably end up um, doing incredibly badly in this thing and getting an ace. That was 1,197 to be able to get an ace in this tank. That would be kind of a second class or even maybe a third class in the new TVP-100. Yeah, a little bit of difference there. Nevertheless, we're going to boost up so we can be able to try and get some of the field mods on this thing eventually. Remember, I didn't even have the second field mod, but if I did, that would massively improve the gun handling of the vehicle. Okay, so my Prima Victoria game. Funnily enough, we actually managed to make some battle pass progress even when I lagged and my computer auto-forwarded. I was still better than five players on the team there. Let's get back in the Prima Victoria and see what we can do. If it's anything like the uh, the restart, apparently if I just... When I when I make my YouTube videos, if I just do the intro really, really quickly, then I get good matchmaking. Oh. Well, this isn't good matchmaking, but I guess I'm still going to have to roll with it anyway. So let me go back to what I was saying about the Prima Victoria. This tank, its hull armor is tragic, its turret armor is okay, its gun is just so underwhelming for 2022. Who wants 230 Alpha? And while the penetration is undoubtedly good, on the standard rounds for a medium tank, on the premium rounds 258, it's not even really that special for 2022. I think you can see a lot of that. This vehicle is just completely replaced by the Centurion 5-1. Centurion 5-1 with an extra load of hull armor that's been welded on the front plate, which actually means that you can kind of use the front plate when you're using the gun depression against lower tier tanks especially, and I'm having to give way to two different tanks who for some reason wanted to drive that way and now they're turning to go in the same direction as me. Could you not have just gone that way to begin with, guys? Because I'm trying to get up on the hill to see if I could be able to claim that for the team, and unfortunately I don't think it's gonna be the case. Man the Centurions. Vehicles that should be close to my heart, even though this is a Swedish version of the Centurion, right? As vehicles that obviously are, are British. Nevertheless, the Centurion, when I got it, it was just never really fun. And having replayed a lot of the uh, the Tech Tree tanks and my free-to-play counts around Tier 8 Medium recently, I can tell you that they're, they're, just, they're just really not very fun to play. You get so many premium tanks. Like the Calibans, for example. If I saw a Prima Victoria in a Caliban, as soon as I see its hull armor, I'm just absolutely dumping it. And I don't really care if it does 230 damage to me. Because the Caliban's going to do 700 to you. Alright, so the 268 version 4 has fired. I, I can't drive up. And do you know why I can't drive up? I can't drive up because those Calibans are just wanting to absolutely catch me. And that's what he's doing. He's coming around the corner. I got hit by the 50. I wouldn't be surprised if I get hit by the Caliban now. And yeah, just... I predicted it. Now the 268 version 4 is going to get me? Maybe not. Well, I obviously shouldn't have pushed forwards there. I obviously shouldn't have tried to help my allies. I can't even manage to track this tier 10 tank destroyer, which would be lovely if I could and just hold him in place. Guess that's what I'm going to have to do. He's used his repair kit. Um, and yeah, the Caliban just dumped into my lower plate and I lost 653 hit points to his gold round. Honestly, I think playing something like this right now, you'd have to be an absolute masochist. I'm worried about the 268 version 4 coming after me, but I feel like I have to try and push this Char Future 4. In this kind of a situation, this is where, like, British tanks are actually good. British tanks are actually good, sir. Where's that Char Future 4? Is this the second time I'm about to get killed by a Char Future 4? Can you shoot someone else, please? Can you shoot someone else, please? Oh... All right, well, I tried to do double or nothing in the Prima Victoria. Goodness gracious, didn't work out well for me. Well, unfortunately, it looks like the restart was only going to work for German tank destroyers. Okay, so I played the worst tank destroyer. I played the worst medium tank. Why don't we play the worst heavy tank now? 
which it pains me to admit, is the FCM50T. The FCM50T, a vehicle that used to be an absolute banger back in the day. The FCM50T was fast with good gun handling and great premium rounds and preferential matchmaking so it never has to meet tier 10 tanks. However, these days, it's just not enough to have preferential matchmaking. It's not enough to not have to see those tier 10 tanks. You have to have something else to go with it. And while the FCM50T is fast, the age of the support tank is gone. I'd say a vehicle like this back in the day when artillery was, should we say, more important, could be able to outmaneuver the enemy vehicles and stop them from, um, should we say, keep them at a distance and be able to avoid the enemy artillery shells with its speed. These days, however, artillery really isn't of so much significance if you've got a good amount of armor. It will still damage you for sure, but when you've got very weak armor and you're a big tank like this uh, and they got big splash then I feel like the FCM 50T is probably worse off than a super heavy and more importantly those super heavies you can't use artillery to be able to dig them out alrighty then so what am I going to do with my FCM 50T well there's a load of medium tanks which are incredibly scary on the enemy team but I just feel as if unless I try and use the speed of this vehicle what am I even doing with my life so I'm going to try and take the tank into a bit of a, a support position. I'm going to try and support my team. I'm going to try and help them down the east. That's what I'm going to do. Let's make our way over there. See if I can be able to get some support fire off for the mediums. Try and snipe it out. Then maybe later on in the battle I can try and trade my hit points. I don't want to be too reckless. I don't want to be too aggressive in a vehicle like this. Because it's a big lumbering support heavy. Luckily we've ended up getting into a fairly nice matchup. Although, here's the sad thing about playing tanks with preferential matchmaking. Even in a matchup like this, it's not a nice matchup, if that makes sense. And that is because these vehicles were always designed to be a roughly about tier 7 and a half. They weren't tanks that were meant to be competitive against the other tier 8 vehicles. This tank, inferior to a 5100, for example. Or, if you think about the KB-5, no one thinks about the KB-5 being good compared to something like an IS-3. And that's how these vehicles were enabled to have relatively poor statistics. Because the other tanks had better statistics, but they had worse matchmaking, so they had to meet those tier 10s. And unfortunately for me, all the accuracy that I have on this vehicle doesn't seem to be working out well for me right now. Luckily, that Progetto seems to have exposed themselves and we managed to put our first shot in. I'm just going to blind fire here, and even though we have some big bloom on that gun, even though I believe I'm using vertical stabilizers on this tank, um, we're able to get those shots in. I'm going to keep blind firing here. I'm pretty sure my ammunition is dirt cheap, so I don't really have to worry about that. And while I'm blind firing at where the Progetto and the G-Saw might be, I think I'll keep aiming uh, roughly towards the left to see if we can manage to feather out a shot on the LT-432. Alright, this game is looking incredibly bleak. That's all I'm going to say. They've managed to get a foothold with vision. Our Progetto seems to be going in. Luckily, we don't manage to penetrate the mantlet of the Progetto there. That's crazy. Luckily, one of our Progettos seems to be going in as well. I can't manage to feather out on the LT-432, but our Progetto just went in. The LHMTV seems to be vulnerable now. He actually managed to spot me there, which makes me a little bit worried. And there's a Udez who's forwards, who my shell velocity, which is 1,000. It's not bad. I can't quite manage to catch the top of his turret. He manages to get a little bit safe there. The LHMTV comes forwards. The Udez finally decides to push up. My shell goes high. And my gun just really isn't the intimidation factor that you have on other heavies. No one really cares about getting hit for 240. Although this tank does have a good rate of fire and so it'll be delivering those shells often. Okay, so this isn't looking very cool. They've clearly got an LHMTV who probably has decent view range. Who's managing to spot me on the corner. We've got a Lunson who's pushing our Indian Panzer from above. I should probably make my way up there to see if we can be able to get a bit of a harassment on them from above. Maybe I can, maybe I can't. Come on, Mr. Lunson, see if I can get you in the side of the turret. I can't. My shell whiffs even though I'm using vertical stabilizers because this thing feels like it has gun handling from about seven years ago. And that's really the bottom line. Wargaming, I'm not sure if any of you have noticed. But sure, there's power creep in the game, but I really feel like Wargaming have just made, been making all of the tier 8s crazy. It feels like the standard alpha damage now for tier 8 is 320. 
And while that kind of makes sense, um, and I don't disagree that 320 is not an okay alpha damage to have for a tier 8 tank, it just feels as if the ones that don't, you're seeing how a lot of the vehicles we're playing today are the ones with the worst alpha damage. Just can't really seem to compete with it. So I'm trying to get into position to see if I can still be able to hit this Progetto. I do expect that my time is about to be very much limited. Managed to track that player and then here comes a real French heavy tank. Is my Pershing going to be able to handle himself? My Pershing fails to handle himself. I've been Amarak, so I can't even have fun towards the latter part of the game. The Pershing fails to do any kind of damage to the Progetto, pretty much. Maybe I can get a shot in there. Maybe I can finish off this Progetto before I die, and my hit points aren't really working out. Now I've got a damaged turret to add to my woes. It's almost as if having alpha damage and having a a reliable gun or having like an autoloader or having armor or having mobility is kind of useful and I really do feel today my blood pressure rising and it's really hard to remain composed if these were the only premium tanks that I have but of course you know we got them all and so do I find myself playing those ones no I find myself playing those ones to blow off a little bit of steam can you honestly believe there are so many tier 8 premium tanks in world of tanks Having just celebrated a 10 year anniversary of when I first started streaming this game, it's absolutely wild to me that it felt as if back in the day that having a new premium tank every three to six months was like a big deal. It doesn't really feel uh, as if that, uh, that has been maintained, right? Okay, so the tank destroyer went bad, then good. The medium tank went bad, then bad. The heavy tank went bad. Maybe we can do well in the best light tank. So we're going to be playing, well, the best, I wish. We're playing in the worst light tank. We're going to be playing in the M4190. So the M4190, honestly, when the vehicle first came out, it was actually very good. Um, it had nice alpha damage. It was kind of this pseudo light tank, pseudo medium tank that could really be able to out damage its opponents. The problem is now is there are light tanks with autoloaders. But more importantly, the big problem now is that light tanks scale so hard with view range and they scale so hard with um, equipment such as commander's vision system that if you're a big light tank it just doesn't seem to work out so we finished third on experience on the fcm 50t i i really didn't feel like i shot that badly i'm very surprised that our shells didn't go correctly with 0.32 accuracy but maybe i was taking chancy shots okay so let's get stuck in with the Black Dog. Why do I call it that? Well, it's a Bulldog, and this is the, the blank version of it. So, the Grand Finals. If you're wondering why it says GF, it's not because it's the it's the girlfriend tank. Um, this is this is the Grand Finals version of the Black Dog, or of the M4190, which actually came out before the unskinned version. If you're wondering what Grand Finals stands for, there used to be uh, a War Gaming League, as you can see there. And the War, War Gaming League was the pinnacle of competition. It was teams that all played against each other, and there was a leaderboard, and then eventually the best teams got to come together from all of the different regions to be able to play in the Grand Finals. I had the pleasure of commentating on one in 2015, and I believe this was the first of the new tanks they released in the Grand Finals. So let's talk about um, just this vehicle when it first came out. When it first came out, yeah. I, I feel as if having a bit of a light tank that could deal damage was very good. Um, because sometimes just it felt as if you could be competitive while doing the damage. However, these days, with the equipment massively changing inside the game, I just don't feel like being a big light tank is, is acceptable. And I feel like the light tanks that do the best are the light tanks that, um, that have the strongest camera rating. They have the best opportunity to spot. And we can see that our 90mm gun just didn't really scare off that Progetto. I have to keep fighting him though. And the reason why I have to keep fighting him here is because I know that he's fired multiple shells and so he's reloading. Unfortunately for me, my armor isn't going to work out. But I've just got to keep fighting him here. i just got to keep using my DPM and unfortunately my shells are bouncing off. He actually fired. This Progetto 54 is clearly showing that they're not the best of players. He's actually saved up a couple of rounds and he tried to take a chancy shot against us. I should be able to reload for him here. And boom, there's one. 
I can't really afford to take another shot though right now. And luckily we've managed to be able to out damage this tank. A bit worried about the fact that none of my team have decided to take the high ground position. There's an STA-1 who seems to be hell-bent on trying to hit me here. I'm going to change to an HE round and see if I can find the top of this guy's turret, hopefully without getting caught. But my team actually helped me out there. Okay, I'm incredibly worried about getting rushed right now by all of those players over there. Um, I guess I should try and get out of the dip because there's no way I'm fighting a WZ-120, 1GFT. And this is where it'd be really nice to have things like camera rating in World of Tanks so you don't just get spotted randomly. Uh, the HWK-12 managed to actually spot us there as we were making our way up and he manages to kill our Udez. He's going to try and go into the bushes now to be able to shoot me. And I'm just going to try and reset the engagement because I just don't feel as if... Um, I don't feel as if I can really just fight it out. Even though this is a good damage dealing tank when you're down to a one shot because you had a Brigetta 54 that attacked you and none of your team decided to actually play for the high ground. Let's go back and try and be a damage support. Um, so I think the real reason why this thing is posting such a bad win ratio is not when you get on maps like this, honestly. It's not even that bad on a map like this. The reason why this thing is posting such a bad win ratio is when it gets on a map like Prokhorovka or Malinovka because it just gets outspotted. It just gets outspotted by better light tanks. That's the issue. The reason why this one is struggling is because you have an ELC even 90 who can just drive down the bushes on Malinovka or Prokhorovka and there's zero that you can do about it in this tank. You might as well just let them win. And I have no idea why I'm getting so unfortunate with my shells right now. None of them seem to want to go where I want to, but maybe I should be taking vertical stabilizers instead of a commander's vision system on this tank. Of course, all of these vehicles, I don't have multiple sets of equipment. Um, okay, what's your problem? Do you want me to go and spot for you or something? Is that what your plan is? Okay. You can go spot for me, don't worry, you got this. You got this Scorpion G. I would probably be quite offended if I was a tank destroyer as well at the fact that there's a light tank kind of just chilling at the back of the map, but... What can you do when you have the camera rating of a medium tank on the move? Or even less. Borask probably has more camera rating than I do, and that's with a really good crew on this tank. Luckily for me, it looks like the enemy team is starting to wilt under pressure. I haven't really had to do too much in this game. I would actually like to have two builds on this tank. I'd have two builds. One of them would be gun rammer, vents, and vertical stabilizers to have a little bit of a combat setup for the vehicle. And my other setup for the tank would probably be... Um, having exhaust and a commander's vision system to have like a full spotting build. Luckily we managed to pick up a little bit of a cheeky kill there. Hopefully we're not going to be caught by the Kanona Nyagpanza and maybe we can actually manage to get something at the end of this game. We can only hope, we can only hope that maybe we're actually going to catch some vision and get a little bit of spotting. So, so far I honestly feel as if I've just been an inferior medium tank in this game. Obviously I'm really fast, but there are quite a few medium tanks. I'm looking at you, uh, Kampfpanzer, that are also very fast in World of Tanks these days. And so I really feel like the lines between light tanks and medium tanks have been blurred. And oh my word, that is a Kanon and Yagpanzer coming for us. I'm just going to ignore my problems and try and deal with this player instead. And then turn around and try and deal with the Kanon and Yagpanzer with the 105mm. So it looks like my team handled him absolutely fine. Maybe I can reload an HE shell here for the Scorpion and try and sneak up and be able to get them. They're probably sitting in like this gap here. Am I going to try and vault over this part to see if I can find them? I think I should. It's a little bit risky. Luckily, he doesn't look like he's thinking about me now. Oh, he is. He is. He's got me. Oh, well played. Well played. I should have waited. Should have been a little bit more patient than maybe I could have got a couple of rounds into the back. So, this was... It's a win. I got a couple of kills. But let's be honest, it's a disastrous result. And I'm almost happy that I'm having such a bad session. Because if I'd come in and just got really lucky in all of the games and made these terrible tanks look good, then you might think that they're actually competitive in the game. They're really not. And while you, you will be able to do well in them occasionally, more often than not, you're going to just end up feeling very frustrated playing them because that's how I feel playing these tanks recently. I feel as if I'm losing games not just because of my plays 
but also because of the fact that your tank is just not competitive. There are medium tanks that have the same camera rating as you, that are nearly as fast as you, that can deal 720 damage with APCR rounds in two seconds, that can also end up using Commander's vision systems, which kind of replaces the whole point of a light tank. And clearly, what we've seen so far in today's video is that if you have a tank destroyer that doesn't have a gun, if you have a medium tank that just sucks in all areas, if you have a heavy tank that tries to be a medium tank and doesn't have any armor, or if you play a light tank that tries to focus on doing damage when you're kind of meant to be a scout, then it's going to suffer and your, your win rate is going to definitely be well below what it would be in a vehicle that actually was designed to perform its role. But honestly, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I don't think this would be a fair playing the worst tier 8 premium tanks unless I also played the 59 pattern. The 59 pattern is possibly one of the biggest jokes in World of Tanks history. Do you know why? Because the 59 pattern was basically Wargaming trying to cash in on the success of the Type 59. Everybody knows the Type 59. It was an infamous vehicle, still is, that everybody seems to want to try and get their hands on. And until recently, Wargaming hadn't sold freely, but they did in a bunch of bundles. The 59 pattern was meant to be the hull of the Type 59 combined with the turret of an M48 to kind of blend together both of those awesome features. Uh, however, let's be honest, the, the hull of the Type 59 was never really the uh, the sweet spot of the tank. It was always the turret armor. And you can have an M48, and that's, that's all fine and dandy, but if you put the mother of all weak points on top of it, I mean, let's be honest, this isn't really a, a weak point. Uh, it's, it's more of a weakness than... What do, you, what do you think's gonna happen? Do you know what the even bigger joke about the 59 pattern was? Is that even though no one really cares about Chinese tanks, mostly inside the game, for some reason we have four different tier eight Chinese premium medium tanks, of which three of them were bumped out what felt like very, very quickly early on in World of Tanks history. The 59 pattern I'd say it's probably the most useless, redundant, worst tier 8 premium tank of all time. And even to this day, even though Wargaming just kept buffing it and buffing it and buffing it and buffing it, they could never really get into a position where anyone would actually want to play it. When you review the statistics of the 59 pattern in the current state, it just has... It's got, it's, it's got okay pen, it's got okay premium pen, alpha damage 240, no one's really going to think about that. Its DPM is not too bad at 1,900, accuracy at 0.36 is not great. 400 meters view range feels to be fairly standard for a tier 8 vehicle, and I almost feel like with a huge spotting opportunity on top of this vehicle, this maybe is one that could get more view range than that, as like just a little bit of a bonus feature. Luckily, the 59 pattern never has to meet tier 10s, I believe, unless I'm mistaken, which means that this is uh, is kind of the worst, not the worst possible matchmaking, because of course there might always be no tier 7s on the enemy team. But um, yeah, you don't you don't meet all that many tier 9s. Alrighty then, so what am I going to do in the hull of the Type 59? I, I, I swear that child was even looking at me like, what is that tank? Some people might think it's honestly like a new vehicle inside World of Tanks. And then go and, I guess, take a look at one of my archaic uh, tank reviews of this vehicle. What an absolute total farce of a vehicle. The worst thing is, is that while it's got an okay turret, that weak point is visible. Like, imagine a ship coming over the horizon. You're going to see the mast first. As Well, at least unless you believe that the world is flat, I guess. And I think, like, the uh, 59 pattern is a good example of, of seeing that the map would be curved as well, I presume. Although probably, actually, World of Tanks map is fairly flat. I'm not sure they're probably allowing for the curvature of the world in it as well, maybe. Should I try and get in there to try and help out my uh, Char Future 4? I mean, I, I don't know. Should I have gone in and sacrificed there? I don't know. Probably not. I think that was a little bit too ambitious. Um, I could have gone around the corner and got farmed. Maybe that would have allowed me to just get out of this game quickly. But I feel like after all of my terrible results so far, I've got to have at least one game where it goes reasonably well. Wow, I don't know what I'm more surprised about. The fact that I didn't pen the uh, the tiger there or the fact that I actually managed to get away with it with regards to my hull armor. 
So that Type 61 is going to go around the corner. I'm going to track him or not. He manages to go through my side armor because I'm over-angling it. Um, but it's tricky, though. I have to try and get around the corner quickly. All right, our teenage VZ-51 is going to go here. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to drop back. I'm going to have to be careful that the SU-100 isn't aiming down at me right now. I'm also very worried about the fact that the Conqueror is probably going to appear from above. Look, luckily, the SU didn't manage to get me there. So I'm going to do a little bit of a a little bit of a cheeky... Uh, oh, I'm going to fail it. Oh, no, I cannot believe I failed it. Okay, okay. If at first you don't succeed, try, try, and try again. So I, I took a bit of a too uh, steep approach there. So let's see if we could do it again. If I fail this again, then that's just going to be hor horrible. Oh, why is this tank so slow? It's so slow. What's its engine power? 17. That's not that bad. Okay, well, at least I managed to uh, to get into a position now to shoot the SU-101. Ooh. Well, maybe it's actually a good thing I didn't get up there. But I tell you what isn't a good thing is the fact that it looks like the enemies are about to... Uh... Oh... I just don't even know what to say anymore. Well, maybe I can just hold this player and try and deal with this one. Is he going to ramp himself to death? I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. At least I managed to get some spotting and I get some damage. And an SU decides to torpedo me. You know what? Considering that's nearly the entirety of a Conqueror getting taken out. I don't think I've ever rage quit on a YouTube video before, but I am pretty much rage quitting now. I had about as much fun as a trip to a dentist, I think, in today's video, in all honesty. And I think vehicles like this are truly showing their age. The game is getting faster and faster and faster. And unless you have an autoloader, unless you have alpha damage, or unless you have armor that can actually work in a situation which this one really doesn't, then you're kind of more of a tourist. You have to sit there and just watch the disaster happening. Or uh, probably you're there to feed the competitive tanks on the enemy team all of their juicy double hit point damage averages. Luckily, my team were able to, uh, to get through that one by capping it out while the enemy Patriot decided to sit as far away from the possibility of winning as possible. I guess it was me carrying in my Type 59 pattern, right? At least there's one saving grace of these tanks, and that is that uh, because they're played so poorly, you, you, you can get battle hero badges even when it seems like you've done practically nothing in the game. Nevertheless, we still managed to finish halfway through on damage. Well, we actually finished fourth on damage in that game and sixth on experience. Am I still happy with the result? No, because I guess my kind of vibe in World of Tanks has been ruined. And that is that unless I'm playing the newest, greatest vehicles, and unless I'm winning like 78% of my games and I'm managing to get like 3,300 combined and I'm destroying on average two vehicles a game, like I do in the 122 TM. But it's almost got to the stage where I don't feel like I'm enjoying myself. And that is the problem with when you have overpowered easy mode tanks in the game. But I guess they're only overpowered and easy while you have some unfortunate individuals who don't have all the latest and greatest toys. And they're stuck with their 59 patterns. Anyway, ladies and gents, boys and girls, I'm actually kind of happy that this video turned out to be as completely tragic as it was, as it actually paints a fair picture of the vehicles. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. Maybe some of you are, are, are sadists out there and you just love to see me suffer. If that's the case, give the video a thumbs up, but if you hated the video, give it a thumbs down. And let me know in the comments if you have any of these vehicles and if you are considering actually selling any of them or trading them in, in Wargaming's vehicle trade-in system. And while I mean, it's it's so sad. This is just like the epitome of sadness in World of Tanks for me, seeing them trying to encourage you to trade your lover and turn it into a 7032 with the 122 millimeter. There definitely is an argument for the sunk cost fallacy. Anyway, that's it. As always, thank you so much for watching. You've been epic and hopefully I'll see you soon.